Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. And spell your last name for me? S-I-G-L, Sierra India, Golf Lima. How do I say it? Like Seal. Seal? Yeah, like the animal. And your rank, of course, is Sergeant. Sergeant, correct. And your MOS is what? I'm a 68 Charlie. Practical, you... practical nurse specialist. Where's your hometown? Uh, my hometown, I grew up in, in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. Okay. Where do you live now? Uh, Surprise, Arizona. Surprise, Arizona. Yeah. And, I moved. Uh, I moved to Arizona in, two th in uh, 1993. So um, just to make sure that uh, you know, when when soldiers transition back to um, part-time status, um, make sure that they're um, that they're able to uh, pick up kind of where they left off um, as in their civilian jobs. Um, make sure that they're medically and, and uh, emotionally able to do that. Have you ever done anything like this mission before? No, I haven't. What other missions, mobile missions, deployments, or other extended kind of missions have you had? Uh, I was uh, in 2014, uh, I was uh, mobilized, 2013, 2014, I was mobilized to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda um, for nine months as a practical nurse. Okay. So. Is that what you are in your civilian uh, job? I'm actually a registered nurse in the, in the civilian side, yeah. So. And you, being like me, I always, is practical nurse higher or lower? Lower. Lower. Yeah. Practical nurse. So you're going to step down. Right. Maybe you're going to step down in pay, too. No, no, uh, pay. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> well, hopefully something happens to get the room light somewhere. BAH helps, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about... Uh, Um, I'm going to be uh, filling a position as the the NCOIC of the Shape Clinic. Uh, Shape is a soldier health um, physical examination. So once the soldiers uh, clear Building 60, which is uh, the the facility where the majority of the SRP takes place. Um, the Shape Clinic is their last stop. It's a little bit more in depth, uh, more um, face time with a, an actual one-on-one -on -one provider. Uh, allows them um, and all that information is documented and then um, uploaded to the VA system. So they're um, so that if they have any issues, um, medical issues that need to be taken care of or documented, that once the soldier gets home they can go to the VA and get those taken care of as well. So are you going to be specializing in returning soldiers? Say that again? Are you going to be specializing in returning soldiers or deep yes, soldiers? Yes, just, retur just returning soldiers, okay. yeah. Okay. And um, is that anything similar to what you do as a Red Team nurse? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually uh, I, I'm a registered nurse in a neurological ICU. Okay. So. Talk a little bit about your ICU there. Uh, are they, has your, has your employer been actively knowing what's going on with you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, our, our, our employer, uh, I, I can't say enough good things about them. Um, they're actually uh, losing two RNs to this deployment or this mobilization. Uh, myself and another, another RN, um, we both work for the same for the same ICU, and they, as soon as we told them that what was going on, they were like, "Okay, you know, let us know when you get back. Let us know if you need anything. Um, you know, I, like if if I could use a, an employer as an example, um, that that they would be they would be it. So, give me a little more money to make yeah. the gap. Make the gap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what, uh, so that's good, they've been supportive, and of course, by law, of course, they have to keep their job open, but mm -hmm. you, you get a sense that you, they're not going to have any problems. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that at all. Okay. Oh. And then, um, what about the, uh, the other guy that, that from your uh, ICU? Mm -hmm. Did he, uh, like, did he volunteer for this, too? Um, he's kind of, it was kind of in the same boat as I was, actually. Um, he belong to battalion as well and um, we both kind of got got brought down for the for the mission to fill vacancies so yeah do you anticipate going back to the 
particular specific job over there could uh, replace you. Uh, do you anticipate having a lot of people that you need to document what's going on with their medical conditions for the VA? Um, I, I mean, on average, we see about a, um, the clinic sees about 100 to 125 a day. Um, and you know every single one of those soldiers you know has a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a provider uh, and all the all their information and all their issues will be documented and um, and you know taken care of so are you mainly going to be talking to reserve or and national guard returning yeah um, definitely uh, most most of our mission is compo 1 or uh, compo 2 and compo 3 which is uh, reserve and national guard so so have you Visited Fort uh, Bliss yet? Uh, yeah, we were there for um, uh, about 26 days um, between the beginning of February to the beginning of March. At what point did your pulse kind of accelerate and say, okay, this is going to be something new, different, maybe exciting? Uh, day one. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mean day one of visiting Bliss or day one when you heard about what was going on? Um, day one of actually uh, when I actually met the individual that I'm going to be replacing and got a chance to sit down with him and um, kind of go over, you know, what happens on a daily basis and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That it, yeah. Is it another sergeant like himself? Yeah. Yeah. He's, a, he's an E5 as well. And um, uh, what do you got? You got a, you got a wife? Uh, I have a wife and four children. Four children. Okay. Yeah. And how do they feel about the older business? Um, my older ones, uh, they're they're kind of used to it. Um, you know, uh, they're they're at the age where they're pretty self-sufficient. I got a 20-year-old and an 18-year-old, so um, you know they've been through it. Um, they've been through. They went through my last mobilization. Uh, the younger ones are a little bit. Uh, a little bit, a little bit more of a touchy situation. Um, I have a, a two-year-old and a four-year-old as well, so it's uh, it'll be interesting to um, you know be able to um, help them kind of process you know where I'm at. And my wife's uh, amazing. She you know she's uh, very supportive and um, helps helps talk to them a lot. So yeah. Now, um, I know I kind of asked this, but do me a favor and say, like I said before, nothing like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. you say that okay? uh, why is it so important to document somebody's medical history uh, of these returning, demobilizing soldiers? Um, so, any time a soldier. Um, sustains any kind of an injury um, while they're on active duty, um, that injury is um, covered and then they can receive follow-up care for that injury for the life of the injury um, until it's taken care of, um, whether it be through, um, through the Army channels or through the VA. Um, the soldier can also uh, file for um, VA um, compensation. Um, and disability for um, to um, you know if that if that uh, if that injury is deemed and considered uh, like lifelong. So. Okay. so that's pretty good about the procedure. Why is it important for maybe from an emotional or taking care of soldiers? Kind of stuff? Uh, it's I mean it's that's what we do. We take care of soldiers. Um, we just got to we. It's our mission as, as, as NCOs and as leaders to make sure that soldiers are taken care of for the long term, not just, you know, for the short term and, and for the immediate time frames, but for the rest of their lives. I mean, we all sign on the dotted line. I mean, some, some, of, some of us, you know, do three years and get out, and some of us, you know, do 20 years and, and sustain a lot more damage, I guess. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, all soldiers deserve to be taken care of, um, especially if they ended up, um, you know, injured in some way, shape, or form. So, did that answer your question? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, make sure I got a minute 
I'm not sure what exactly you were looking for, oh, but line. so something, something like okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, what would you like to discuss that we haven't talked about? Uh, stuff that I don't know. Maybe you wish America knew in general. Maybe maybe you wish you know to express your soapbox time. I think it's just uh, it's. I mean, it's it's an honor to be able to to serve my country. Um, you know, I. Um, a little background on me, I, I joined the Marine Corps in 1993 and I did four years on active duty, um, you know, another four years in the reserve and then got out right before 9-11 um, and joined the Army Reserve, you know, 10 years later in 2010. And um, just because I felt that continued need to, you know, to serve. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's just, whether you do, like I said earlier, you know, whether you do, you know, a, a two or three year hitch or, and decide that, you know, you want to get out or whether you want to do it for 20 or 30 years. I mean, no, no one soldier is, um, their sacrifice is, is, you know, less than any other one, I think. And um, uh, the family members and, and um, community members are um, vital in, you um, providing encouragement and um, backup and, and support to those of us who, um, you know, put on a uniform, I think. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Tom. You're welcome. Anything else you'd like to talk or say? No, I think we're good. <laughs> okay. Very good. <coughs>